Let's say that you have an email list, but that you haven't emailed them in a long time. And you want to now launch something, you want to get something going again, communications with them to be more regular. What do you do? So in this video, I'm going to show you what not to do, and then also show you an example of what to do. Okay, so first, let me show you what not to do, how, how not to warm up your relationship with your list again. And I'm going to actually show the example. Uh, I have in this folder some great examples and some, and some not so good examples. This one um, is from Michael Hyatt. And I have to say, Michael Hyatt is a good guy. I really believe he has good, good values. He has great experience, great knowledge, great heart. Uh, but maybe the marketing person working for him wasn't uh, uh, quite um, you know, connected to, to the, the, the people that he's trying to serve in, in a kind of way. So I haven't heard from Michael Hyatt in a long time. In fact, what happened was I think I had signed up for an email newsletter years ago from him and then I unsubscribed or maybe I didn't confirm. Anyway, I had not gotten emails from him for a long time and suddenly I started getting emails again on a regular basis and this was the first email. Look at this. A secret and a freebie, a limited time only. Okay. That, that sound, that, even if I, if I didn't open the email and I just looked at the subject line, it looks like spam, doesn't it? Okay. So first of all, when you want to start um, reaching out again to your people, be really careful about what the subject line is. You want it to seem, not seem, you want to be authentic. And so the, the advice that I'm giving people these days about how to write emails to your list is imagine writing email to a friend of a friend. So think about a supporter, just take a moment, think about a supportive friend that you have right now. Somebody that is just a fan of yours, um, helps you, you know, wants to help your business succeed. Okay. Now imagine this person, and this is somebody you respect and you highly admire and respect. Now imagine this person were to refer a friend of theirs to you. So let's say your friend is named uh, John. Okay. And John is going to refer Mary to you. Um, you don't know Mary yet. But Mary is a friend of John's and you respect and admire John, John's supportive of you. Now, how would you write to Mary? Mary has been introduced to you and then you're going to write an email to Mary. So you would write an email with saying, hey, Mary, you know, here's what I understand that you're needing at this time. Um, I'm so glad that uh, we found each other and uh, here's, what I here's how I can help. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. And maybe here's an article that I wrote recently that I thought you know, you might find interesting, um, but regardless, reach out, let me know. So you write in that kind of way, right? In, the, in a very friendly way, you write as if to a future friend. And so that's how I recommend writing to your email list as well, your email newsletters. And this is not, I mean, look at this. If, if, if I had written this to Mary like this, Mary is going to tell John, our, our mutual friend, George is uh, kind of spamming me or he, he, gosh, he's writing me like, you know, I'm, I'm someone to be manipulated or something. Do you see what I mean? Hi, George, I'm here in your inbox with two things, a secret and a freebie, the secret first, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, it's, it's, it feels manipulative how, you know, for free, for a limited time, click here and grab your copy. I really don't like the word grab. Please, everyone, let's stop using the word grab, especially with our, <laughs> the president we have. The word grab has been, has been soiled and it's very violent of a word, grab, right? You don't, you don't grab a friend, you, 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 know, you, you hug a friend, you, you touch a friend lovingly, you don't grab a friend, right? Um, to grab your copy today as if it was like, oh my God, it's, it's, a, it's an ebook, right? It's not like it's a, whoops, excuse me, sorry about that. Um, it's an ebook, right? So anyway, this is what not to do. And then of course, having not heard from, this guy in a few years suddenly get an email like this and then a few days later another email like this you know and it's um the secret to higher income and more time to go fishing it sounds so spammy people let's stop using kind of like i always think about myself only and all i care about is more money and more free time and that's what you should no people no okay we we are talking i mean if you're my audience you are probably have an audience that cares about something more than just money and free time. So let's talk, let's stop talking that way, please. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, you know, can you achieve more by doing less? And it's like, hmm, I, I, I don't, of course it's, it's good to have lots of downtime, but 
I think we all want to work diligently in service of, of the higher good. So let me uh, now show you a good example. So what to do is, first of all, I recommend that before you send your email, if you can possibly take um, three to four weeks before you send your first warm-up email, that would be ideal. And in those three to four weeks before you send your warm-up email, first post some, some of your articles on social media, wherever you're typically getting engagement, on your Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, or wherever you typically get engagement, Instagram, post a few of your articles. Maybe you write something new, you create new videos, or you, you post something from that you've already written in the past. Post a couple of them. Okay, post two, three a week if you can, so that within three to four weeks you have like 10 examples to choose from. Out of those 10, see which two or three got the most interest, got the most engagement. Got it? Okay, now take those two or three and send them in your warm up email. Okay, and in your warm up email, here's, here's the, a format that I would recommend. And this is actually from a client of mine, and I coached him through this, so no, it's no wonder that I'm showing you this example. So this client of mine, Jason, is an NLP expert. He's really a bona fide, super sharp, and, and really at the top of his game in the field of NLP, neurolinguistic programming. He's really advanced there. And so, he, in fact, he's, he's, um, he's even going beyond NLP to something called neurosemantics. Anyway, so he's writing to people who understand and, and are interested in NLP. So the subject line is NLP versus neurosemantics, the, the top five paradigm shifts that changed my life. So it's like, oh, that's, that's interesting and, and, and fascinating, right? Um, so, you know, hi there. A while back, you signed up to receive my best NLP training content, and I haven't emailed you in a while. As I get back to my regular schedule, I wanted to respect your inbox and give you the option to redecide how you'd like to stay in touch before I share this week's best content with you. No longer interested in NLP? Click here and unsubscribe. Would you like to simply receive an email like this once a week? If so, remain subscribed and just go to the bottom for the new stuff. Prefer to receive emails only once a month? Click here. We'll change your subscription. So it's really great that he's starting right off with, hey, if, if you really don't want to hear from me, unsubscribe. And it's good that you want people to unsubscribe when you're first sending your warm-up email because you don't want to keep sending emails to people who don't want to hear from you because eventually they're going to click the spam button and your email address will be punished. And then he goes right into uh, the, the best you know, um, content uh, that he's been posted, posting lately. And he, he gives a snippet of each one and he, click, and he gives the link to read the whole thing. And that's a good practice because you want to see which of your subscribers are actually wanting to click so that they can, so you can see who's engaged and give them the, um, uh, the option to really continue engaging with you um, and also to, to just give a summary so that they can see if they want, they want to read more of that, about that particular topic. And so at, at the bottom, hey, what's next for me? This is what I'm up to now. This is what you can be expect, expecting going forward. And after you send these types of emails for a while, like first your warm-up email, and then be maybe another warm-up email in, two, in three to four weeks, another warm-up email in another three to four weeks, after that, you can start, you can start to communicate more regularly. So I hope this is helpful. Remember to re expect unsubscriptions in the beginning when you're first warming up your list, but that is a good thing. You want people who don't want to be there to, to not be there. Eventually, they may rejoin, but let them unsubscribe for now. Get back in touch with your list. I really hope that this uh, video has been helpful. Always open to your questions and your comments. My name is George Cow. You can always comment below. And I wish you a reconnection with your audience that is authentic and that is of service. Take care.